north or south of planet Earth, you might have been treated to a sight like this recently. But it's not the work of ET and a whole lot of intergalactic fireworks. It's an aurora, and it's all thanks to the sun. You see, this old gas ball of daylight is a nuclear furnace. Its core is a toasty 15 million degrees Celsius, and that energy radiates slowly outwards, kind of like a pot boiling on a stove until it reaches the surface and is carried out into space as heat and light, along with millions of tonnes of charged particles every second. But... Every now and then it has a hissy fit, and instead of throwing out a million tonnes from its entire huge surface area, it throws out a billion, a thousand times more, or ten billion, and from just a little small area. Those small areas are called sunspots, which are cooler, darker patches on the surface, known to spit out flares of charged particles called solar storms or coronal mass ejections. And recently, one sunspot named AR3664 had what Dr. Carl would call a major hissy fit. In just a couple of days, AR3664 burped four huge bubbles of super-hot geomagnetic plasma, which hurtled towards Earth at between 250 to 3,000 k's per second. Luckily, the Earth has a magnetic field, which protects us from most of the sun's energy. But as the solar storms pass around us, the charged gas particles funnel down into our atmosphere at the North and South Poles, reacting with gases and glowing in our upper atmosphere, painting the skies red, green, pink, blue and violet. This was the strongest event of this kind to hit the Earth in about 20 years, uh, because the sun goes through periods where it's quite active or where it's very quiet, and we happen to be in an active phase at the moment. Scientists around the world are always on the lookout for solar storms, and not just so they can spot auroras. While it's a beautiful you know, kind of thing to, to look at, it has a lot of consequences for like a technological society. Solar storms have the potential to damage technology in space that we rely on for things like communication and navigation, and could even be risky for astronauts. There have been satellites that have died in orbit, at the moment, we have about 7,500 working satellites in orbit, and we'll see, you know, when we get the data back, how many of them died. There was even a solar storm back in 1859 called the Carrington Event, which interfered with telegraph communication here on Earth, as well as causing the brightest aurora in recorded history. It woke people up who thought it was sunrise. It was so bright you could read a newspaper by it. While experts aren't expecting anything that big, they reckon we could see more auroras over the next few months. Unfortunately, they can't tell us exactly when they'll happen, so we'll just have to find a comfy bush and keep our eyes peeled. <laughs>